Hello Brighouse High School and welcome to this lesson which is going to focus on the function of the skeletal system. Today's lesson we want to achieve two things. The first thing that we're going to be looking at is the four classifications of bone in the human body and we want you to be able to describe what these are. And secondly we're going to be looking at the five major functions of the skeletal system and you guys explaining what they are. So hopefully we can achieve those by the end of this lesson. So Starting with the classification of bones. In the previous lesson, you learned 21 major bones of the human body. And what you now need to do is understand which classification they sit in. There are four classifications, each of which differ depending on the size, the shape, and the role of the bone. The four classifications are long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. And as we go through this presentation, you'll understand what each one of those does. So, long bones are exactly that. They are longer than they are wide. And they are found in the limbs of the body for movement. So in places such as the arms and the legs. Short bones are roughly the same size in length and width. And they're primarily there for weight bearing. Flat bones are there to do two things. They're there to protect vital organs but they also provide a nice flat surface for muscles to attach to. And lastly, we have irregular bones, which again are exactly that. They're odd shaped and they do different functions such as protection, but also muscle attachment again. The first task that I'd like you to do is see if based on those descriptions, you can place the 15 bones that have just come on your screen into each one of those classifications. Pause the video now and see if you can do that. Okay, welcome back. So hopefully you've put those 15 bones into each classification and let's see how well you've done. So long bones, as we said, are longer than they are wide and they are found in the limbs. So you should have had the humerus, ulna, radius, metacarpal, femur, tibia, fibula, metatarsal. All those are long bones which are there for movement. Short bones, there are only two of them there, and that was carpals and tarpal, tarsals, so in the wrist and in the foot. Flat bones, we had four of, so the cranium, the scapula, the sternum, and the ribs. And lastly, the one irregular bone that we had listed was the vertebrae. So, let's see if we can look into this a bit more detail. So as we said, long bones. These are here to generate movement, power and speed and they do that by being pulled by muscles that are attached to those specific bones and we'll look into more detail that as we go further through this. Short bones, so the carpals and the tarsals, are used to balance and stabilise the body by bearing and spreading weight evenly through the hands and feet. Flat bones, used to protect vital organs, so here we've got the cranium which obviously protects the brain and they also provide a nice flat surface for muscles to attach to. And then irregular bones, which is the vertebral column, the individual vertebrae stacked on top of one another, which protects what we call the central nervous system, which is a series of very important nerves that send signals from the brain to all other areas of the body. We're now going to see if we can apply this to sport. So this is another activity. Here we have uh, a tackle in rugby. And we're going to focus on the defending player, the gentleman in the black shirt and the green shorts. What I would like you to do is see if you can identify the four classifications of bones in this picture and identify why those bones are playing such a pivotal role in this tackle. After you've done that, I'll reveal the answers and we'll see how well you've done. So pause the video now. Right, welcome back. So... Starting with long bones, so we're going to focus on the tibia, the fibula and the femur. In this image it allows him to generate power in his legs to tackle his opponents through bending them and then driving them forward. The flat bones, we focused on the tarsals in his feet, so as you can see he's spreading his weight evenly so that he's balanced when he makes the tackle. Flat bones, you could have looked at the cranium or the ribs. Obviously both of those are going to protect vital organs when he makes the tackle so that the collision doesn't impact those vital organs. And lastly the vertebrae. So previous lesson we talked about the vertebrae allowing you to bend and twist so it does that role. 
but it also sends very good messages around the rest of the body from his brain to say, right, you need to get into this position, you need to do this with your leg, this with your arms, and it makes those decisions. So that's how we apply classifications of bone in sport. We're now going to jump into the five functions of the skeleton. And as we know, it is a rigid supporting framework. It contains 206 bones, but we only need to know 21. And it plays many different roles. The five roles that we need to know are protection, support, movement, blood cell production, and mineral storage. Those are the five main functions of the skeleton. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. Protection, we've touched on previously. So the cranium protecting the brain, the rib cage protecting the vital organs, and the vertebrae protecting the central nervous system. Movement, so where bo uh, two bones meet, we call this a joint. And then once we apply muscles to the skeleton, that allows us to generate movement. And all the movement we use in sport is done through joints and muscles working together. Support, so obviously the skeleton gives us a solid structure, such as the legs supporting the upper body, or the vertebral column supporting the head. Blood cell production, so here we have red blood cells, uh, which are used to carry oxygen around the body, and they are made in something called bone marrow, which is found in the ribs and the limb bones. And then lastly, we have mineral storage. So essential minerals that the body requires are stored in different bones around the body. So, protection in sport, and we're going to apply this to a few examples here. As you can see, we're using American football. So the hard nature of bone, the fact it's solid, means that it protects more delicate parts of the body. And, you know, we're using the same examples over and over again, just so that it, get, it gets ingrained. So in this case, the cranium is protecting the brain when the tackler, the person in the blue strip, is attempting to make the tackle. The ribs of the attacking player, so the fellow who's carrying the ball, are obviously protecting the heart and lungs from any kind of collision. And in both of them, the vertebral column is protecting the central nervous system, which runs from the back of the brain all the way down the spine. Just while we're on the vertebral column, because it's something that you need to be aware of, um, as we know, the vertebrae are individual bones that stack on top of each other. Each vertebrae has uh, somewhat of a hollow in between once they stacked on top of one of each other. And the central nervous system runs down through these holes all the way from the back of the brain down to the base of the spine. And this is the integral nerves that send every message from the brain to different parts of the body. Obviously, with it being so important, if this becomes damaged, then serious injuries can occur. And those injuries relate to things like paralysis. Okay, movement. So, as we mentioned previously, the skeleton is jointed, where two or more bones meet. And then once we apply muscles and something called tendons to this, we create movement. So, tendons are fibrous materials that attach muscle to the bone. And if you can see in this image of the bicep working, moving the ulna and radius, the tendon is located near the elbow. When that bicep contracts or pulls, the ulna and the radius are pulled up towards the body, as if you were doing a bicep curl. So it's the movement that's created through an effective combination of muscles, tendons and bones that allows all movement in sport to happen. Support. So the skeleton gives us our shape. Although muscles and skin can provide additional shape, the primary structure that our body is based on comes from the skeleton. And it's that solid, solid platform where organs and muscles are attached to. So in this case, you've got bones in the legs supporting the upper body, You've got the vertebrae supporting the head, so it can bend forwards, backwards, rotate left and right. And flat bones within the body where muscles can attach themselves to. As we've said in the previous slide, muscles are integral for anything that we do within sport. And they need something to attach themselves to, and the skeleton provides that. Blood cell production. So within the bones, bone marrow creates red and white blood cells and platelets. Now red blood cells are used to carry oxygen to all areas of the body and this is the fuel that muscles require in order to work. Without oxygen the muscles can't work, the body can't work. 
white blood cells fight any disease and infection that comes within the body. So it might be from what we breathe in, it could be from an open wound or a cut, but once infection comes into the body, these white blood cells will go to that area and try and fight that. And lastly, platelets. When we do have a cut or an abrasion, platelets will be rushed to this area of the body and they'll start to clot that area so that we don't have a huge amount of blood loss and we can prevent the amount of infection that comes in. Platelets you will probably often refer to as a scab on your hand and that's basically the congealed blood and the platelets working together to cover that open wound up. It's particularly important for sports such as boxing or mixed martial arts or rugby where there's a high collision rate and there's a greater chance of cuts and abrasions happening. And lastly we have mineral storage. So bones act as a store or a reservoir for essential minerals that the body needs. So for example calcium, 95% of the body's calcium is stored within bones and it's need to make strong bones for teeth development but it also helps to clot blood which is very important to what we just discussed previously and it also allows muscles to contract or helps muscles to contract which again we've talked about previously. So calcium is an integral mineral that the body needs to store. And secondly phosphorus. Phosphorus is 80% storage within bones and phosphorus again is used for bone and teeth development but it also helps you grow and it also helps repair of muscle cells. So these are essential functions for a sports person. So let's see if we know more and remember more. Can you identify the four different classifications of bones and give examples of which bones belong to each category? Can you explain the five major functions of the skeletal system if you were asked? And as a bit of a bonus, can you remember these little bits of information I dropped in? What tissue connects muscle to bone? What gas does red blood cells transport? And what percentage of calcium is stored in bones? If you can answer all those questions, you'll do fantastically well on the next task that's about to be set. Thank you. Stay safe.